PowerShell 7 is released. And we just had an amazing week with a lot of community authors contributing blogs to PS Blog Week. Thank you, Superstar Jeff Hicks, for putting all that together. Now, if you didn't quite see those blogs, don't panic. I've got a free ebook for you down in the show notes. The link is there. So now is a perfect time for us to start the episodes of the show. There's a ton of stuff to talk about during this series, such as what new features are in PowerShell 7. I also want to be able to show you some of the features that we're looking at for our future preview releases, which is our future release as well. But you know what? More importantly, you might be perfectly happy with Windows PowerShell 5.1 and might be asking the question, should I transition to PowerShell 7? Well, you can guess that the likely answer is yes, but that's a good question, a very valid question. So we want to take a look at that. A couple of other things we might want to talk about is how do you migrate to PowerShell 7? And I got an episode for you on that. I also want to be able to talk to you about technical debt, how to service technical debt and how I service mine. As an example, how could I accelerate my usage of PowerShell 7, especially if I have new things to learn and I've got a lot of projects that I have to deal with, help you with some ideas wrapped around that. But I'm a nerd and I want to get to something fun and I want to answer one of the most commonly asked questions I get all the time. Can I use my Active Directory commandlets on PowerShell 7? The answer is yes, but let's take a look. Here I am on my Windows laptop, and I'm going to launch the new Windows Terminal. By the way, if you haven't checked out the new Windows Terminal, you are missing out. I think you would really like it for PowerShell. You'll probably see that while we're working here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm on Windows PowerShell 5.1, and if I wanted to get a list of modules, I could do, well, first of all, I would have to spell it right, <laughs> list available, and get a list of modules. And the reason that I'm showing this to you is, is that I've installed the RSAT tool so that I have the Active Directory module, and I just wanted you to see it so you know that I'm not cheating. There it is. So it's installed, and you may have this already installed as well. Now, if I wanted to use the commandlets from this Active Directory module, I could manually import the module first, but I'm not going to do that. No, because we don't need to do that. Starting with PowerShell v3, it'll auto load the module. Uh, and so I'm going to do get ad computer. This is one of the commandlets. And here's how I test to see if it's auto loading is I'll hit the tab key. Ah, I completed it for me. Filter star means I just want to see all of the computers that I have. And this is grabbing it from a uh, domain controller. And I only have two computers on that domain controller. But they work, as you expect, in Windows PowerShell 5.1. What about PowerShell 7? Well, it just so happens if I go over to this tab, I have PowerShell 7 already installed on my Windows laptop, and it's running side by side with Windows PowerShell 5.1. This way, you can work in PowerShell 7 and Windows PowerShell, and it won't, it's not risky to any of your work. You can have them both. So let's try this. We already know that the module exists on my laptop, and we already know that it works under Windows PowerShell 5.1. Let's see if it works here. I'm going to hit the tab. Oh, yes, it did complete it, but I went too many tabs too far. Um, and I'll do dash filter and star. And you can see that, yes, those Active Directory commandlets work just fine under PowerShell 7 on your Windows box. But wait, here's the trick. Wee! Now I'm on my Linux box. Hey, I wonder if they work on my Linux box. Let me clear my screen. And what I'm going to do is... is I'm going to do something a little bit different. You've probably seen this. This technique that I'm doing right now has been available since PowerShell version 2. I'm going to implicitly remote those. Now, I'm sitting on a Linux box. So those RSAT tools, they're not installing on this box. But what I can do is something like this. What I'm going to do is create a new session. And I'm going to create it to a domain controller. That domain controller has the module for the commandlets for Active Directory. Now, what this is going to let me do after I get signed in is then I will import that session. And notice what I'm doing here is I'm taking the session, the variable that I just assigned that session to, and saying that I want the module Active Directory. When I strike Enter, it will import that module, kind of. What this is actually doing is creating a bunch of proxy commandlets for that module. So it looks like they're installed here, but the module's actually not installed here. But I get to use the commandlets like get ad 
computer. Yes, it works. Filter, star, and there's the list of my computers. But wait, one more. I'm going to go back to Windows. Wee. So back to Windows. Here's PowerShell 7. Here's Windows 5.1, or Windows PowerShell 5.1. Here's WSL2. Have you worked with WSL2? A lot of developers use this. This is a way that you can have uh, a version of Linux on your Windows laptop that you can work with. I use this for testing all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up PowerShell. There it is. And let's do the same thing since I'm on Ubuntu Linux, a Linux box. Let's do the same thing that I just did with my Mac. Dollar sign session. And we'll do a new PS session to a host name of my server core. That's my domain controller. Put in my password. And then we'll do an import PS session. The exact same thing I did on my Mac. Like I said, this has been around since PowerShell version 2. And lo and behold, if I get my prompt back here, I'll try out the command like get computer, filter star, and yes, it works. So yes, the Active Directory command lets work under Windows PowerShell 5.1, under PowerShell 7 on Windows, on PowerShell 7 on a Mac or Linux. They work as well with implicit remoting. Now look, obviously there's a lot to talk about with what's going on under the hood, going on under the hood, and we're going to do that. That's for another show. Um, if you're looking though for other modules that are compatible, I want to point you to a great module compatibility sheet that we put together for you. And there's a link in the show notes. So I tell you what, until next time, remember, stay safe and please help someone.